Good morning and welcome to Margaret River, 50 years in the making. Um, an auspicious day, one that's been much anticipated and um, delightful to be here at Vas Felix and just an acknowledgement of that beautiful welcome to country that we had at the start, which I thought was very apposite for a day that is then now about interpreting wine and the land from which it comes. Margaret River is such an extraordinary place. The tension point of two oceans, of weather systems, and it's just got this incredibly, incredible energy and vitality. And I think that that nature absolutely drives the energy and vitality of the people here. The first bracket is very much about the established older vineyards of Margaret River. The Bass Felix, I wrote 45 year old wine. Just to remind myself, it really is in any pantheon or any class of red wines from any part of the world, 45 years is a very uh, substantial age under cork in particular. Uh, what I think most impressed me overall was the ageability of the wines. It was a real joy to taste these two wines from the 80s. This is that beautiful serendipity with Margaret River climate, this Horton Klein Cabernet. Through the 90s we played around with more clones, we played with changing those, that tannin structure to make the wines bigger. We actually hid the thing that's the most beautiful thing about Margaret River. But across the whole region, everyone started drinking these wines from the 80s and that's really brought them back to what they're making now, which is much more wines of balance and wines of place. I mean, I really love these vines because the tannins in all of them, uh, for my palate, resolved. I call Margaret River the prettiest place uh, in mainland Australia. The pretty region that it is produces pretty wines, which are nonetheless, of course, of extraordinary quality and longevity. There's no question that everything that we've chosen here in the new era of Margaret River wines is about sight. Fascinating wines and what I liked about the second bracket was that there were so many different characters in there which may be a reflection of all those different sites and I don't think it's just because the wines in general are, are younger. But we've been attributing a lot of it to, to clone here, the hot and clone and I wonder how much of it is actually attributable to climate. We talk about maritime climate, the great Cabernet regions of the world have a maritime influence. But in Margaret River, so many people actually talk about this is extreme maritime. This is not just, you know, a nice little breeze coming off the ocean. It's the most effective air conditioner I think anyone anywhere in the world has got. On a vision of introducing wines that would rank with the very best in the world, as you like it, a pursuit of excellence and a belief in a vision that would elevate us. On the basis of this morning's tasting, it's hard to argue that that conversation or that introduction hasn't at least started. The 1987 vintage that put uh, Lewin Estate on the map, certainly from a collector's point of view. And I think it was the first wine at auction that ever got more, more than $100 a bottle, and that was happening in the mid-1990s. That is a mighty tasting of, of, of seven incredibly uh, complex and wonderful wines. And uh, I just want to grab my favourite white burgundy makers by the scruff of their necks and bring them out here and pop them on the table and say, Show us your wines against these, because it would be embarrassing. I actually think these wines have the power to be Grand Cru comparatives. There's a lot of new oak in these wines, yet there is still immense fruit power. It blows me away how much we've got there. I think there's actually a quite consistent 
regional definition, of, particularly of structure in these wines. And when we were talking about resemblance to Burgundy or resemblance to anywhere else, what I find, what I do find fascinating, there actually, there actually isn't a direct cognate for these wines. When does a wine become a classic wine? At what point do we consider a great wine great? You know, in terms of regions, I think of Barossa, Barossa Valley is a classic wine region of Australia. Margaret River is a new classic. Um, 50 years, it's very compressed history, but it's been, you know, kind of, sh you know, shockingly successful. It's not enough just to make great wine in our world. You've got to get the distribution and you've got to get the narrative going. And if you think about fine wine today and the ones that are most successful, it's the people behind those wines that have got character and personality and an amazing amount of energy and vitality, which is what's great about this region.